Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc. Manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Stadler Incorporated. Inspiring creativity for more than 150 years. Available wherever fine art and craft supplies are sold. www.stadler.us This season of Hands-On is all about living things. Learn about the animals and plants that share our environment through great projects. We've divided them into the same classifications used by scientists. First, we divide the animal kingdom by whether or not they have a backbone. Then we look at other characteristics like what they eat, where they live, and their body temperature. The groups we'll study are amphibians, birds, fish, mammals, and reptiles. For invertebrates, we'll divide them into insects, arachnids, and crustaceans and mollusks. For plants, we'll talk about the way we see and use plants in everyday life. Every project has five steps and five main ingredients, plus you'll want to keep basic supplies like scissors, markers, toothpicks, and rulers on hand. Remember, be creative, and let's learn about living things. In our study of living creatures, we move from animals to plants. The plants we feature are all known as land plants. Most plants have in common the process of photosynthesis. This is the process that allows plants to take energy from the sun. Instead of dividing plants by scientific classes, we feature three ways we see plants every day. The first type is flowers. Flowers or blossoms are a part of the plant, usually the prettiest. On today's show, we start out with creating canes from clay to make flowers then use color pounded from real flowers to make artwork. Then it's a sewing technique with ribbon to make rosettes. Last up, we learn to make Spirelli flower shapes. So let's head to the garden. Today's show starts out with learning how to make canes. And you'll see on the first example, we've made a flower and we've got a polka dot clay cane and a swirl cane in the center and also a ladybug cane. And then we've also taken those same canes and put it on a little votive and pressed them into the side for a pretty design. Here's what you'll need. We can start out with whatever color clay you'd like. This is all oven-baked clay. We have our clay tools. And then you can have assorted glassware or clay pots or whatever you need. We've also taken a blister pack and sliced a piece off, and that's what we're going to use to cut our clay, and then we also have some instant glue, and that's optional. So the first thing you want to do is protect your work surface when you're working with clay. We want to put some wax paper down and make sure that, especially if this is going to be used later as a table for food or something like that, that we don't have the clay touching it. And then we want to condition our clay. We start with the lightest colors first, so I'm going to start with my white clay and all conditioning means is softening it in your hands and letting the heat of your hands make it soft and pliable. So I've conditioned all my clay ahead of time. So I've got white, teal, the yellows and the oranges, the black and the red. So let's start first with our polka dot cane. To make our cane we're going to take our first, let's take a small piece of white and I'm going to create these long logs or snakes. So I'm just taking a small piece at a time, using my work surface, and rolling it out. And then I'm going to cut them into lengths, probably about two and a half inches long. And you can see I have a grid underneath, so I know exactly how long to cut. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one white cane in my hand, and then I'm going to place five teal canes around it. So I'll put a blue one, and then I'm going to alternate with white. So it's blue, white, blue, then another white, a teal, and a white. Let's see if I've got enough. Let's put one more in. One more set. Another teal, 
and then a white. And you're going to get something that looks like that. Now when you're done with that, then you're going to take that and you're going to roll it gently. Not too much pressure. All we're trying to do is mold those colors together. This is the basic of making a cane. As you can see here, if you continue to roll, it'll get more and more blended together and it will get longer and longer. The longer that you make it, the smaller the cane is going to be when you cut it. So I'm going to take then this piece of blister pack, slice off the end, and you can see here exactly I have my polka dot cane. So I can slice off the pieces that I need. So let's go on to the next one. This is the swirl cane. For the swirl cane, I'm going to spread out two pieces about an inch and a half by two inches. I'm going to start with a yellow core. So I'm just going to do one little yellow snake, put that on top of the yellow, put the yellow on top of the orange. You see I've trimmed that yellow to be a little bit shorter. Now I'm going to bend around rolling those pieces around that center yellow piece. And I'll continue to roll. I'll slice off that end so you can see. And you can see I have a swirl there. But now I'm going to continue to roll that on my work surface, lengthen it out, and the swirl will become more and more prominent. Then we'll slice that end off. And again, we'll keep slicing our beads off. I've got one here so you can see exactly the design to an exact size. And then here's a smaller one with all the beads cut off. The last cane I'm going to show you is a ladybug. For the ladybug, we're going to use five black and five red. So I'm going to create my core. Let's see, I've got my five, so let's alternate. One, two, the black the red, as you can see, we always use an odd number. Put my black again. So it's kind of the same as almost creating that polka dot effect, but I'm laying these next to each other. So let's see, do I have one, two, three, four, and five? Now let's roll those up into each other. So I've got black and red alternating. Again, now on this one, it's a little less important that they're exactly even because ladybug spots aren't exactly even. So I'm going to get that core together. Once I've got that piece, then I've rolled out a piece of red, and I'm going to roll that red piece around this. So I've got this little sausage with the core inside. That's what it looks like when we roll it out, and you can see with those dots that I can just slice those off. And there we have ladybugs. The other thing that I did at the very end that I forgot to just show you is to put a little core of a black snake on the edge so that that'll be the ladybug's head so that when I slice it off, they look just like my little samples, which they have the head at the top of the ladybug. The last thing is, is leaves. That's just a block and I'm slicing off. So now that you've made all these great canes, you can take all different glass materials. When you go to bake this, it's going to be baked according to the manufacturer's instructions, 230 degrees for anywhere from 10 minutes on, depending on the depth of your clay. And you can attach them to the glass surface before you bake and then put the whole thing in and bake it like that, or you can make all your canes, fire, or put them in the oven, harden them, and then attach them with some instant glue. For our next project, we're going to use real flowers to make a beautiful card. The things that you'll need are some watercolor pencils, an assortment of papers to make your card base and to do some layering to make an interesting card. You'll need a piece of cardboard and several sheets of paper towel. And of course, you're going to need a real flower. In addition to that, our basic supplies are a hammer, some tacky glue, a pair of scissors and decorative scissors if you have them. We'll need a paintbrush and a little dish of water. So let's go ahead and get started. Now we do have a pattern on our website, but the pattern is just for a pot and simple leaves and stems. So if you want, you can just do your own. Um, we're going to set it aside for the moment and the first thing we're going to do is make our flowers. Now you can see I have a few samples here of other flowers that we've made 
and you can use any type of flower for this, but pink ones and red ones work the very best. You'll want to experiment a little bit and see what results you get from different flowers. So the flower I have is actually from a Christmas cactus, and you can say that there's many layers to it. And the best flowers actually work if they aren't too big and thick, so a single layer of petals is best. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut away the bottom of this flower so that I just have one single layer of petals. And if I wanted to, I could use this to do a second flower. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put down my cardboard and then I'm gonna put down a layer of paper towels and then I have to put some paper down. So I'm gonna put this first piece of paper, put my flower on it and you can see I've done another flower here already. And then I've got one more piece of plain paper on top of that and another layer of paper towels. Now all of these towels are gonna to give a little bit of cushioning to protect both your surface underneath and so that you don't just kind of mess up the flower completely so that it's unrecognizable. So you want to begin by hammering the flower gently and you're gonna go all over the surface of the flower. Now it's good to kind of peek underneath there and see what's happening as you go. So you can see that I've just begun pounding it and it's flattened out a little bit, but I'm not getting very much color. So I'm gonna keep on pounding. And what this does is it transfers all the dye from the flower petal into the paper. And so that when you're done, you're gonna end up with petal ink. So I'm gonna keep pounding a little bit. It's gonna be very loud. And then I'm just going to switch over here and show you that I've got most of the imprint of the flower. Now I could keep pounding on this and getting a little bit more color out, but often even though you keep going and going, you'll find that the very center of your petals doesn't leave a lot of color behind. So another option is to go and take the petal back and use it as kind of a paintbrush and put a little bit more color into the center of your flower. So you can see that that's what I did with this flower right beside it and I've got a nice filled area. The next thing I'm going to do is take a pencil and I've gone ahead and let this flower dry completely. And you can also see that you can take away all the little bits of flower and just wipe them off to the side. So I'm gonna take this pencil and it's actually a watercolor pencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to now outline each of my petals. And I wanna do this fairly lightly so that I kinda of keep that nice delicate look to the flowers. So after I've outlined, I can take my paintbrush and a little bit of water and then I can blend my pencil lines right into the petals and the actual ink from the petals. And you can see how beautifully that blends and it looks very natural and gives that extra little outline to each of the flowers. You can also go in with a little bit of yellow and put a center inside your flower. So after that's all done, again, you can let it dry because you've used water with your watercolor pencils. And I've gone ahead and I've cut out a couple of leaves and some stems. So I'm gonna take my green watercolor pencils and I'm gonna color on those a little bit, a little bit to each side. Now you could try and doing the pounding technique with the leaves. You might not be able to get as much color out of them, but it is very fun to experiment. So again, I'm gonna take a little bit of water and I'm going to blend my colors. And you can see, even though I put no color along this edge, I can blend and pull the color out and make it look like a beautiful watercolor leaf. Once you're all done with your flowers, you can go ahead and trim those away, let your leaf dry, and then we can build our card. So we'll just take a card base, which I've already folded and cut. I've used decorative scissors to cut this piece of paper out. We'll put our flowers on. I also cut a little pot out of corrugated cardboard and then we would add our leaves and our stems which I did the exact same way as the leaves and tuck those under there and you build a beautiful card made out of real flowers. Let's take a look at our finished project. I've gone ahead and I've put this one in this wonderful little rucksack lunch bag and you can see how it's nicely framed in there. Our next flower project are these beautiful rosettes made from fabric. We've layered three or four different rosettes with a button and these can be created to make a headband or they can be great for prize winning ribbons. So let me show you what you'll need. You're going to take an assortment of fabric. We just need small pieces so scraps are great. Um, we have needles with a large hole. 
It's very important that you use a heavy or a buttonhole weight thread because these are going to get a lot of pulling when we make them. We have assorted buttons and assorted colors of ribbon. And of course, keep your scissors and your pencil on hand. Now the first thing you want to do is to create your sizes of your rosettes. So we're going to nest those so we can start out, there's a lot of different ways to trace out your shapes. We can start out with some nested templates. We could use a compass to make our circles or you could use shapes. So I could take my ribbon and just trace around the outside edge on my fabric. But I want to have three sizes. So I've chosen like a three, a four, and a six inch size. I'd do another one possibly on the smaller one and then cut these out. So we just cut our circle. Remember when you're cutting, always moving, move the material, not the scissors, and you'll get a nice smooth edge around the end. So we continue cutting whatever your choice of colors, and today I'm working with yellow, orange, and purple. The next thing is, is to take my heavy buttonhole button weight thread and I've threaded about a 25 inch length of thread. I'm going to pull that thread up and I'm not going to make a knot at the end. So let's start, I'm going to start with an orange one so you can see it well. This is the right side of the fabric, it really doesn't matter, but I'm going to poke up from the bottom to the top, pull my tail and I'm holding it in my finger. I can either hold it with either hand so that I don't pull my tail out. And then I'm going to take a simple running stitch, which is go down and up. I'm going to pull. As you can see, my hand is still along the bottom so that I'm not going to pull my thread and not pull it too tight. And I'm going to continue sewing. So it's a stabbing motion up and down all the way around. You can see I'm putting a couple stitches on my needle. Again, I'm holding my thread and then I'm pulling along. I'm going to continue going until I've gone all the way around. I'm going maybe a quarter of an inch from the edge. And you want to keep it as, as even as you can, but it's not, you know, extremely important that it's perfectly even. Let's keep sewing. Again, I'm still holding my thread because I don't want to pull it out because then I'd have to start all over again. Once I get to the end, I want to end at the same side that I started on. So I'm going to go down to the bottom, and then I'm going to let my needle pull out. I'm going to take my thread, and I'm going to pull both ends simultaneously, pushing the center in. These are called rosettes, or a lot of times you'll hear them referred to as yo-yos. Then I'll have my two threads together. I'm going to tie a knot, and let's tie a second knot to make sure it's nice and secure. This is why it's so important to use a buttonhole thread, because that's such a heavier, heavier weight. And there I've got my yo-yo. Now what I'm going to do is take and layer three different sizes. So I've cut three different sizes here, and I've made three sizes here. So I'm going to take my yo-yo, and instead of going face down, which is a smoother side, on this project we're using the back side. So I'm going to stack my purple, my orange, and then my yellow on top. And I've left all my strings hanging at the moment. Then I'm taking this cute little decorative button, but you could use any button. I'm going to take my thread, and this time I'm going to tie a knot at the end. I'm going to come up through the back, through the center of the purple, coming up through the hole. Then I'm going to come through the center of the orange, and then through the center of the yellow. Now I'm all to the, to the end. I've got my other odd threads out of the way. I'm going to go through my button and then back down the center of the whole three. And that's a little hard to push through. Push through and then we'll pull our button. Now we'll take a small little stitch at the end, go through that loop. See that again? A small little stitch through our fabric, go through that loop, and we've created a knot. Now we're ready to trim all of our pieces away, all of our extras. 
So I'll trim all of the little threads from each of my yo-yos. And I have a finished rosette. Now the last final step is to take your rosette and you can take any color ribbons that you'd like. I'm just going to cut a length of ribbon here. Go back and you can stitch to the back. If you stitch just a whole set of streamers on the back, this would make a great ribbon for a prize for um, a school activity or maybe a sporting event. Or you can use the flowers as is, make them into a headband or put a magnet or even a pin back and make it a pin. So those are some great ways to use your flowers. Our last project are these beautiful flower medallions. They're created with a technique called Spirelli, and I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Here's what you'll need. First of all, I've started out with my thread, and I've chosen metallic colors and neon colors because they give such a beautiful effect on Spirelli. Then we have some hole, uh, hole punches. I'm using a flower, and you can use much larger ones as well. Then we need construction paper or cardstock. The heavier, the better. Templates, we've got ovals, hearts, circles, and squares. We have some tape, and then we have decorative edge scissors. On the decorative edge scissors, it's important that they have a very regular pattern. They have to be even, and of course, our scissors. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to do is I'm going to trace a circle. So I'm going to take my circle template, and I would just lay it down on my cardstock and trace around the shape. As I said, any shape can be used, but I'm going to use circles today to get started. Then we're going to cut with our decorative edge scissors, and this is a really important part. Let me just cut a piece out so we can just have one here to work on so you can see exactly what I'm cutting. Okay, I'm going to hold my circle, and I'm going to begin cutting. Now I'm matching the ends of my tines right to the edge of the circle. I'm going to continue around, repositioning as I need to, but I want it to be as even as possible. Again, I'm turning the paper, not my scissor, and going around the shape. This will take a little practice to get it exactly nice and even. The other way that you could create your Spirelli shape is with a punch. And there are punches available that create the exact shape. I continue cutting around, matching up my scissors every time, until I get to the end. Now, if it ends up that your pattern does not end exactly at the edge, it's okay, it's not gonna show on your finished one. So I've got my circle. Let's take a smaller one to get started. I'm going to take a little piece of scotch tape on the back, hold that in my finger. Let's start with our copper thread. So I'm gonna take the copper thread, tape onto the back, I'm putting it on the wrong side of my shape, and then let's just trim a length. We're going to leave it on the spool to pull it off. Okay, Sprelly is, we're going to go into one loop and then go into another loop across from it. It doesn't have to be an exact diagonal. Then we're going to move to the next space right next to it and go to the next space here. As you can see, as I start winding, I'm going back and forth, back and forth, and continue to go around. I'm creating a design in the center of the flower. Now I'm going to start, all of a sudden here, I'm starting to get into ones that I've already used. And it's important to not go directly across because that'll create too regular of a pattern. Again, all the way around. And you're seeing that based on where I start, and where, I can, and where I go across to will determine the size of that space in the center. Now these are very, the one we're creating right now is a very simple Spirelli. It could be done on any colored paper, it can use any color thread, and you can layer multiple layers of thread. And I would continue winding as many times as I want and as deep or as, as intense as I want my color. There's our simple Spirelli. And I have other examples here. I've also done one in the pink color. I could do it in neons. Now, when you get to this example here, all I've done is continue to go, and I've started doing a pattern where I'm doing 
skipping to and going over. And you can see, if you see from the side, it's building up and getting more of a dimension. You can do them on squares. You can layer multiple colors. Here I've done it in the neons with the green being on the outside edge and the pink being more of a central location. And if we take a look at all of the samples I've brought, Spirelli can be used for so many things. I've created flowers on the scrapbook page, on a corner decoration, on cards, or even here as ornaments. These are beautiful Spirelli flower ornaments. I bet you thought flowers were just pretty. They have a real purpose in the plant world. On our next show, it's edible plants or vegetables and fruits. See you soon on Hands On. Projects from today's show plus other ideas are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is show 1211. Hands On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Stadler Incorporated, inspiring creativity for more than 150 years. Available wherever fine art and craft supplies are sold. www.stadler.us Hi, I'm Kathy Stahl, host of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. I hope you'll join us each week as we show you craft basics and great projects, each with five steps and five main ingredients. We have a lot of crafting fun in store for you. And remember what we all say at Hands-On Crafts for Kids, there's no right or wrong way, only your way. Be creative, have fun. We hope you'll join us for Hands-On Crafts for Kids. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Hi, I'm Kathy Stull, host of Hands On Crafts for Kids. Our newest series is all about living things. We'll be crafting projects about mammals, amphibians, reptiles, insects, and more. All the projects have five steps and five main ingredients. Join us for Hands On Crafts for Kids and be creative and have fun.